and welcome to the Mason Miller Show. This is co-host Clay Miller um, with a little bit of twist on what we normally do. So this is kind of a reboot of the Mason Miller Show. As you know, it's been a little while since we've had a new um, edition. And with Mason being out and focused on um, uh, spending time and money learning things he probably uh, will never really use, or as we call college, um, I, uh, I'm going to sub in for him here and fly solo today. So we thought what better way to do this than, um, with an up- upcoming election, uh, a week from it'd be Tuesday. So March 19th, I believe election day, uh, here in Illinois, for the primaries. And we've got, uh, joined today by three guests that are currently going to be running, um, as Republicans for the County board. So first we've got Gene Price, uh, with us and he's running in district nine, um, and just a few things uh, about this that I, I kind of looked up about each one of these candidates. And in full transparency, I've, I've not at, talked to them really about any questions um, that we'll be asking, just like we always do on the, on the Mason Miller Show. We just come in and have a, a discussion about their thoughts and opinions about where we are and what they may do if, um, if elected to serve. So, uh, again, Gene Price, he's uh, born in Shelby County, where he lives with his wife and his uh, two of his three children, his oldest son, uh, also lives here in the county with his grandchildren. Uh, Gene's been an auctioneer for over 40 years um, and interestingly has served on the Christian County Board before and also the City Council in Pena. So um, thanks, Gene. Appreciate you joining us today. You bet. Thanks for having me. Um, yeah, absolutely. Uh, secondly, we have Carol Cole. She'll be running uh, as a Republican in the District 11, running for re-election, actually. Um, Carol's a lifelong resident of Shelby County and she served two years on the board. Um, and, uh, is also a co-owner here of Jake's Antiques in Shelbyville. Um, Carol also happens to be, and uh, once again, full transparency, my, my mother-in-law. So <laughs> thanks for walking across the yard, Carol. Yep, you bet. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, last but not least, we have Jeff Gregg. Uh, he's running a district 10 and, He's lived in Shelby County his entire life uh, as well, and he's attended a lot of board meetings, I know, over um, the last year or two, and, uh, you know, as I said, he's compelled to restore uh, respect for the sheriff's uh, deputies, the volunteers, and the citizens of Shelby County. So, Jeff, thanks for joining us. Thank you. So, guys, um, again, the reason we really wanted to do this was um, I think a lot of people, uh, you know, obviously know some things that are going on um, in the county, but with everything that's going on from a, a national perspective, um, the state, and then also the local, meaning county and city, it's tough to keep track of everything, especially when, you know, you're, you're not running or you don't um, have a family member that's, that's involved. And um, even with Carol being my mother-in-law, honestly, I'm pretty removed from a lot of this just simply because uh, my work is out of town. I, I don't really interact with people in Shelbyville throughout the week or Shelby County. And I think a lot of people are that way, even if you do work locally, you know, people are busy with their lives, their families, so on and so forth. So um, we think it'd be interesting just to just to have a discussion and see, one, what you think the state of the county board is and what, what you would do uh, in particular to, to help things out. So First question, I'll just throw it out there. Um, what do you guys think the current state of the county board um, is and has been over the last couple of years? What I've seen is um, ineffectiveness, really. I mean, that's that's what I've witnessed, um, just ineffective, um, a lot of discussion, but uh, at the end of the day, getting things done and accomplishing what we need as a county um i have not seen a lot of a lot of that so i would i would that's how i would describe it controversy uh-huh. a lot of controversy no one can seem to be getting along you know it seems like it's one group against the other and it should all be one group together not against one another right exactly we should all be working together instead of separately and it seems like there are some agendas That's why people are on the board, because they have a certain agenda. And it shouldn't be that way. We should be working for the taxpayers, for every citizen in this county, not just for the people that I represent in District 11, but all 11 districts. Working for them, 
hopefully saving money for the taxpayers instead of spending more money. Yeah, you know, you say it's interesting, <laughs> um, you know, dysfunction and, and and things like that. You know, I've been to one, I've been to a couple board meetings, only one that I was there from start to finish, to be real honest. And, and frankly, it's, it's difficult and painful to, to um, attend for a lot of reasons. But when you say dysfunction, just stepping aside from the issues that are going on um, in discussion that people may or agree or disagree, I noticed a lot of um, just inconsistency. And again, I've only been to a couple of meetings um, and one total, but it seems like a lot of uh, actions are delayed or um, agendas are changed. Um, you know, again, a- actions deferred, things like that. How would you guys try to, or would you try to condense agendas and, and take action and, and move things forward? I don't know if I should say this, but the first thing I would do is remove the county chairperson and get a new chairperson who actually knows what he's talking about, who does follow the rules, Robert's rules, and does not have his own agenda for certain board members. Um, For instance, I can say that I've asked for some things to be put on the agenda and for some reason or other, they don't get put on the agenda. Can you give an example? Oh, yes. I've asked for a certain person to be appointed to the farm committee six times. And before that can happen, it has to be put on the agenda and approved. And it has been refused every time I've asked for it. And this has been since July. <coughs> Following the rules would be the main thing. I mean... Most generally in a meeting like that, you don't talk to one another mm-hmm. out of line. You know, right. If somebody's asking a question, you talk to the board chair exactly. and then let him speak out. But it looks like now it's, I want to talk to this person or this one, and I don't agree with you, so I'm going to give you my two cents worth. But then you argue back and forth, the meeting goes on, nothing gets accomplished. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, we have... Uh, our constituents come to the meeting and ask questions and, you know, whether you can give them an answer then or not, you say, let me look into it and find out and then get back with them. You know, don't just leave everybody hanging. And then, you know, for instance, you know, there's been a few meetings that the agenda has been the same for three or four months. It's never changed and nothing gets accomplished. But then the next month, the agenda is the same. Nothing gets accomplished. Something's got to be moved forward. And, you know, follow up, get answers, and no one's getting answers. Yeah. To uh, to answer your question, Clay, I, I would wholeheartedly agree with Carol. Um, the the um, leadership of that board, um, once again, I don't, I don't think that is an effective uh, situation there. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. I, I – um Again, I'm speaking from limited uh, um, experience at the county board level. I, I did serve on the school board um, and and then professional, which I know business is different, um, but I'm in a lot of a lot of meetings each week, and there has to be a clear leader. Um, and, and I think following following the rules is really important to establish consistency, but also to, you know, people know what they can expect, but at the same time, to make sure everything that you're doing is legal and will stand up, um, you know, if challenged at, at some point that, you know, when you go back, everything is done um, by the letter of the law. One of, you know, another thing I'd like to talk about, and I think it's interesting in this this election and this, this primary is normally you don't see Republicans and Democrats, um, you know, kind of coming together like a group of you have, um, you know, it's kind of transcending these, the party line. So what do you think is causing this merge and, uh, you know, where it would traditionally be divided? I think it's just people that you like, that you have, you're like-minded, you agree. It's not that you agree whether it's a Republican or a Democrat idea. It's that as a person or as people, you just happen to agree. And 
as we as I talked to different people and and said to them, hey, why don't you run for the county board? I didn't care if they were Democrats or Republicans. I just knew that they were good people, that I thought they would be outspoken on the board. They would ask questions. They would dig into all the issues, know what was going on. It just isn't something that, you know, you choose to do and, I don't know, make up answers. They actually... Um, these people that are running for the board actually look into all these issues. They've done their research. And, you know, I wouldn't care if they were independents or whatever. They're just good people that want to see the county run like it should be run. You say you have to, yeah. you know, it's people that you like. Do you have, do you have to like, <laughs> you have to like a person for them to be a good county board member? Probably not, but I do happen to like all of them. So, <laughs> what about yeah. Eugene? What do you think? <laughs> I like Gene. I, and uh, I, Jeff I think and Larry. And I yeah. think it gets out of hand at this level. <laughs> I don't think it should matter as much as Democrat Republican. Now, the national level, there's mm-hmm. a lot of controversy, you right. know, and we all don't agree on the national policies. But we're not dealing with national policies. That's, yeah. That the has last time I checked, the uh, County board didn't have a lot of impact on no. abortion and immigration and no. the war in Ukraine and so it's, on and so forth. It's, it's what we need to do here locally to make our county the best county that we can. Right. And, you know, to get the right people in there to, that, that can serve the public and get things brought to perspective that needs to be done the proper way and get things settled up. And, you know, we're still, we're all friends. Uh, we get along great. Are we going to agree on everything? No. No one ever agrees 100%. So you keep working at trying to keep getting along, come to a solution that's best for the county, not best for me or Carol or Jeff, but for the people living here for the county that we live in to right. make everybody, hey, we got people in there that's got our, our best interest in hand. Let's let's support them and let's keep them there. Yeah, that's a good point, Gene. So, Jeff, do you think you'll be able to um – stand up and and disagree with gene on a specific issue and still be able to find a compromise and and still walk out of there and have respect for each other and be professional and and stay friendly well i think that's obviously that's the goal and you know as an adult um you should be able to conduct yourself where at the end of the day you you shake hands and you move on even if you don't totally agree with with what the other person where they're coming from but I think that we can work for the, I think we're all in this for the right reason. And that mm-hmm. is to take care of our neighbors and take care of the citizens. And um, no, we're not always going to agree. But at the end of the day, we have the same goal. And I think we have respect. And um, yes, I think we can move forward, even if what we move forward with is not exactly like I would like to see it. I think it's important that you go into it understanding that you aren't going to agree on everything, and, and that's a good thing. Um, as long as you keep it professional and and respectful, um, you know, I think it's it's healthy to have debate whenever you can respectfully um, disagree, try to see the other person's side. Yeah. I just want to say we have 22 board members, and it's really hard to get 22 people to agree right. all the time. But even now, um, with 22 people, you should be able to discuss as adults and come to a conclusion. And at the end of the day, if you don't all agree, I mean, that's okay. You're never going to agree on absolutely everything all the time. But you can still agree to disagree and move on. 22 people is extremely challenging for a county board. They um, tried to. They tried to eliminate it and make it smaller and it, yeah. it was voted down you know seven nine eleven something like that's a, a pretty manageable number you get up to uh, that many and uh, you know yeah that is that is real a real challenge i think but um one last thing here in this segment what's one specific thing that each of you think you want to do that can immediately make an, an, an impact, say in your first in your first six to nine months of if elected. Well, I've tried that for how many months now? Uh, 12, 13, 14, 15 months to get the farm farmed. That is my main goal. And right now it's not being farmed. 
So if we could just get that farm farmed, give it to a farmer for three to five years, nobody's going to have to talk to it in that time. The money, the revenue brought in from that farm then is put into the general fund, and it's used as the purpose, what I think is the public purpose, is to pay bills. So that's that's one of my, my main things. We'll talk a little more, more about that um, in, in an upcoming segment. But Okay, so farming the farm is one thing. Um, Jeff, what about you? Um, the reason I'm running for the board and what I would really like to see changed is just the respect that we need to show people, um, the county employees, each other in that boardroom, um, and the the amount of micromanaging that goes on in this county with the county employees is, and we're losing good employees. Um, I spent a great deal of my life um, at the paper factory here, and most of that time was in a leadership role. And I found out if you treat people like adults and with respect, and you're you're comfortable in your own skin, you can allow them to go and do their jobs and give them the tools they need to do their jobs, um, that you, they will do a great job for you. Um, you. You don't need to oversee every activity they have if you are comfortable with, with who you are and, and, and what you're trying to accomplish. So respect for me, that's going to be a big thing, treating people with respect. Okay. Gene? Um, I mean, there's a lot of things that change, but like – um, giving our law enforcement uh, comparable pay. I mean, we've lost, what, four officers? Uh, a couple of them went to Pana, went to Christian County. Um, you know, we need to give them a reason to stay. Mm-hmm. And, you know, have a, a compatible wage so they compete with every other law enforcement group and, you know, treat them with respect. Um, I, I just think that, you know, Everybody usually, no matter what, the way things, the whole country's gone, everybody's down on law enforcement. We need law enforcement. You know, right. we, our guys are out here busting their butt, doing things. They arrest somebody, do this, and then, you know, it's another deal we talk about, but then they get released, you know, and then they're doing this crap to Teresa, you know, wasting our taxpayer money and time, taking her to court. I mean, it says right in the part of the, uh, cemetery boards it sh- you can be elected or appointed you're you're referencing uh the case against Teresa Bain yes the current, I mean um, I, I've got a very good I've, uh, I've got a very good friend of mine that's been on the um uh, cemetery board and he's the chairman of uh, a county south of here and he's been on for 25 years and I was talking to him about it and he goes he said <laughs> you can be appointed you can mm-hmm. be elected it doesn't have to be one or the other he said, so he goes, right now, he goes, you're on the county, if you're on the county board in Shelby County, I could point you to our trustee of this cemetery board. You don't have to live in the county. Now, I don't know that. Mm-hmm. I'm just telling what he says. He's been on it. But, I mean, stuff like that, don't waste our time. Let's go after the bad guys. You know, get of our law enforcement, give them the authority to do what they're hired to do and give them enough pay to keep them here. All right. I appreciate it. Um, We'll pick this back up. Uh, We're going to take a quick break right now, and we'll be right back with more from Gene, Carol, and Jeff. This is the pledge for Shelby County United. We pledge to you that our political ideologies will never matter more to us than serving our county and constituents. This is our home. It is your home, too. We intend to remind outsiders we can take care of our own. We want to empower you the citizens of Shelby County. We want to show them how to maintain what our ancestors built so that they may do the same for their children and grandchildren. We need your help and your vote to do so. Shelby County United would appreciate the support. Thank you. Welcome back to the Mason Miller Show. We're joined here by... uh, once again, with Carol Cole, Jeff Gregg, and Gene Price, candidate Republican candidates for the county board uh, election on Tuesday, March nineteenth. Um, so again, thank you guys for joining. And uh, y- you know, you just mentioned we just talked about some of the 
things that you want to do that are near and dear to, to, to each of you if you um, were to be elected. Um, I want to jump into a couple of those things. Uh, one of those being, you know, Carol, you mentioned the county farm. And so I guess, I, you know, you have a unique tie to this and the fact that your mother grew up on the county farm. And for people who don't know the whole story, you know, a very, very quick version of it is it used to be called the poor farm. Um, and it was like 1860s or something when it was formed. Back then, um, it was for basically people who either had mental health issues or were indigent or just really had no place to go. That's, for better or for worse, that's where they were put. And uh, Carol's grandparents ran that farm and took care of those folks. So her mother grew up with um, a lot of those folks. So obviously she knows a lot about it um, from hearing her mom uh, speak about it and and uh, kind of the history behind it. But so I guess just bluntly, why – why should we care about the county farm and, you know, what benefit is it bringing? Well, for one thing, there's a cemetery out there. So let me stop you there. What if we put a fence around it and say, here's the county, former county farm cemetery and all the rest of the ground, why should the county keep it versus sell it, in your opinion? Well, it produces a revenue every year. Last year, when we planted winter wheat, which was harvested in July, um, when I went to the elevator, they told me it was some of the best wheat around, that it was over 100 bushel an acre. So we ended up getting a check for $117,000. With the inputs, probably cleared fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000. That's fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000 we wouldn't have to spend on, say, law enforcement, um, roads, upkeep on the courthouse, anything in the county. And it's not currently being farmed, though. It's not currently being farmed, no. So so it's not being farmed, so there's no income coming from it, and we've had income as a county coming from that every year since 1867. Okay, so um, how many other, approximately how many other county farms are there like this in the state of Illinois? Well, when I checked into it, there were 40. Now it's not that many anymore, maybe 25. And most of them either lease their farms or um, custom farm. So if you lease it, which to me is the easiest thing, because the farmer says, I'll give you $300 an acre for, right now we have 197 tillable acres out of the 240 that was purchased in 1867. So the 197 times 300, do the math, the county would get that much money. The tenant would pay for everything else. They pay for the gas, the seed, the fertilizer, everything, that all the inputs. A good farmer wouldn't, wouldn't, would tell you you need to split with them, though. <laughs> you should share the risk. <laughs> At least that's what growing up my dad would, oh. would have told me. But, yeah, anyway, that's all, I get That's it. all changed. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, you know, in uh, custom farming, when we had uh, Kenny Compton custom farm the wheat and w- was supposed to do the beans, uh, he offered so much an acre, but the county paid for all the inputs. Mm-hmm. So he basically just was pro- was providing his service and his equipment and the fuel. So again, not not to dwell <laughs> too much on it because there's a lot of topics. But one, so the county farm, it, it's basically free revenue there. Um, all we have to do is continue to farm it like we always have um, at really no cost to the county. Um, and I think the risk is. In your words, they passed a bill um, recently. Can you tell me just briefly what that is and what it said? Well, I wished I'd have brought a copy of it, but it basically said that counties did not have to have a specific purpose for the property as it did before or what the Constitution says. And it says you can custom farm, crop share, lease, without a specific purpose. When was this passed, approximately? Last last fall. So why, and if that's law, why, why, why are we not farming it? Because of what some people say is not, constitu- it's against the Constitution, because the Constitution says you have to have a public purpose. But wouldn't that be something that would <laughs> have to be challenged at the state mm-hmm. legislature level, and then once it's decided, probably by 
the court, the Supreme Court of Illinois. Then, if it was vote, it was unconstitutional. Then we would stop farming it. Mm-hmm. And nobody has ever challenged it. These farms, there, it's Ford County right now, just said, hmm, we're going to farm. Yeah. And. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, another thing uh, that kind of both of you alluded to, but, um, you know, Jeff, you kind of drilled in a little more, more on it, was the just the morale and the culture of the, I guess, city employees and the respect, I guess. Um what do you, I mean, you guys talked about this a little bit, I guess, at the beginning, but how would you rate that right now, in your opinion? Oh, it's got to be, um, it's got to be at the bottom of the barrel from what I've seen, you know, it's got to be, you know, we're losing good employees, the employees that we have that care are stressed out from what I understand. Um, we have a we have a county treasurer who likes to micromanage everybody that works in this county, and um, she probably needs to do her job. Um, we are well behind on the audits in this county, um, and that falls on the treasurer. I think that she needs to do her job and allow the department heads to run their departments and allow, and we need to allow these employees to, to do their jobs and not fear for their lives every time they walk into work. Um, and I feel like that they don't feel like that um, the leadership in this county has their back for obvious reasons, and I think that's got to change. So, I mean, do you think it's a situation where, I mean, you talked a little bit about in your past where you feel like, and, you know, I want to put words in your mouth, tell me if this is what you were getting at, but basically as a board you hire a point whatever good people, um, in, in their positions, and then you allow them to run their, their offices or their, their spaces and the people that they hire, allow them to do their job. Um, correct. As opposed to, you mentioned micromanaging, overreaching. Um, is that something you see going on? Is that what you were getting at as far as the, the overreach and the, the micromanaging? Um, absolutely. And, you know, like I said, as a, as a leader, your job should be to provide them, hire good people, first of all, treat them like adults, um, give them the tools to do their job, um, and make their job as easy as you can. And in general, what I've found is 98% of the people will run through a brick wall for you if you treat them like that, as opposed to fearing for their jobs and being uh, disrespected um, continuously and, and I think that's what's occurring or has occurred in a lot of cases and, and you know on a, on a humane level it's it's just sad it's just sad on a uh, that we and you know Trisha Miller has preached humanity from the first day that she has came to these board meetings and Lord knows we, I would like to see more of that when we are when we're treating how we treat people okay thank you um and then, Gene, you uh, you had mentioned, you talked about the law enforcement and the need to, you know, um, look at the pay structure or the compensation structure to make sure we're competitive with counties uh, around so we're not losing good men or women. Um, one thing that has come up, and I'll be honest, I don't know a lot about this. It's just that I've, I've heard it and I jotted it down as something to ask about, and, and it's kind of in that. I think all county employees, but also I think there's some issues specific to the sheriff's department, but time clocks for hourly employees. I mean, I got to be honest on the surface to me, that sounds like uh, not a big deal. Um, Something that would be um, pretty straightforward. Can, can you talk a little bit about it and what's your stance on that? Um, A lot of businesses use time clocks. I mean, we do it our business, but Mm -hmm. you know, not with a camera, you know, I'm going to have to be, you know, so the time clocks have cameras? No, they took them down. They, oh, they did not. They originally okay. did. They originally okay. did. But from the employees are felt invaded. Right. So they've taken them down. But still, you know, the majority of companies, if you're an hourly employee, most generally you clock in, clock out. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I, 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 I don't have a problem with that myself. Um. But, you know, just treat people, you know, if you're, you pay them by why they're there. If they're 10 minutes late or 
10 minutes early. Some, some places, I'm not going to say where, but there are businesses that require you to be there 15 minutes early, but you don't get paid for it. You know, you have to be here 15 minutes early, clock, you clock in, but you don't start till X amount of time. Mm-hmm. Um, a few minutes aren't going to hurt nobody, you know, so if you, whatever time you clock in, you clock out a little early, it's going to be, you know, it's usually, it's a 10 or 15 minute sway either way. You know, right. if you're 10 minutes early, you're 10 minutes late, you know, they take that in accordance of your time and how they pay you. Mm-hmm. So for the time clocks, um, I don't have a problem with it, but you know, they're saying some of the, um, um, salaried people, maybe they should clock in. I mean, I, I can give you an example that happened to us in a business that I was a president of. And, uh, we had a gal, we were paying salary mm-hmm. and she kept her own time clock. We had time clock for that employee. She was on salary. She clocked in herself. She would work X amount of time. And when it was all said and done, when she quit, she went back to the labor board <laughs> and said, I worked so many hours overtime, whether I was on salary or not. Yeah. We had to go back and pay her. You might be surprised at how many hours these folks are really working. And Exactly. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, you know, are you actually showing up? You know, do you not, if you're supposed to be there at 8, do you not get to it on 9.30? Mm-hmm. You know, do you work till four? Do you leave it too? I mean, I think it probably goes back to what Jeff's saying. Hire good, competent people and then hold mm-hmm. them responsible for their people and their department. Correct. And if things are slipping, then you go to that person that's, you know, uh, in this case, whatever, the sheriff or any of the offices in the, in the courthouse, um, whoever's running that you know, and they need to answer for their employees um, if if they're not there and working all the time. Um, otherwise, again, hire hire good managers and let them manage. Um, definitely, definitely. That's what you hire them for, right? You know, that's that's their position. Let them manage right. their people. And if they have a problem, they'll approach it. If they can't handle it, then they come to us, yeah, or come to the board members and say, "Hey, I've got a problem with this employee. We need to sit down and talk to them, talk whatever, work it out." Sure. Okay. This just came up at a legislative meeting the other night about the time clock, and it's not working for the sheriff's department because he said it doesn't recognize holiday pay. It doesn't recognize overtime. Some of them overlap. They still have to keep a hard copy. It is not working for that department. Hmm. That's interesting. I'd yeah, like and to. the time clock cost over $23,000, and every year after that, the county has to pay $2,500 for the upkeep of it. If it's not working, why did we spend that much money for a time clock? Wow. <laughs> yeah, $23,000 when I think they could have gotten one for like 200 I think I would yeah. call that sales rep the month up front oh, and get them in yeah. there. Mm-hmm. <coughs> anyway. Yeah. Um, Great topics, great discussion, guys. I appreciate it. Um, we we want to come back for one more real quick segment. I've got kind of a rapid fire uh, Q and A, so we'll be right back with more from the Mason Miller Show. ShelbyCountyUnited.com is where you can learn more about our candidates and the issues that they support. Their mission statement is as follows: We are sick of partisan politics, aren't you, Shelby County? The kind of politics in Washington D.C. is not the kind we want in our backyard. We are Shelby County United a bipartisan group of like-minded citizens that has seen enough of the local bitterness and acrimony for a lifetime. We do not care what the letter is next to your name, but we do care about the person that lives next door to us. In a small county like ours, everyone is our neighbor, and we don't treat our neighbors poorly to make us feel stronger. We look out for our neighbors. Don't forget to vote on March 19th in the primaries. Thank you. Welcome back to the uh, Mason Miller Show. We're joined with uh, Gene Price, Jeff Gregg, and, and Carol Cole, all uh, Republicans running for the county board uh, election again, March ni- Tuesday, March 19th. Um, I appreciate you guys, uh, you know, giving your opinions, your thoughts on a, a range of topics. One in this last segment, one um, other topic I'd like to touch on, and then I do a little, just a, a little bit of quick question and answer with you. Um, 
So kind of the last thing, and one thing I, you know, the county touches a lot of different areas. And to be real honest, I never really up until a few years ago kind of thought about the airport and who who operates that, who's in control of that. Um, and obviously that's, that's a county airport. So tell me a little bit about um, what's going on at the airport. Why is the airport important? Um, and, and, you know, what do you see as the future of it? Well, I'm actually on the air, airport board. Okay, briefly. First of all, they have the un, the young... Who all's on the airport board? Well, I'm the only one from the county board. <laughs> <laughs> they never appoint... Oh, I shouldn't say that. Cut. Um, all your, friend, all your friends <laughs> jumped in with you? So there's Walt Lukowski, <laughs> uh, Dr. Rick Brown, Steve Wimpen from Assumption, Paul Canaday, and John Hall, and then Scott Jeffson is the manager mm-hmm. of the airport. So they rent out the hangars for little of nothing. But anyway, they rent out the hangars. But they have this group called um, the Young Eagle Flyers, which is a group of, of young kids. And you can apply for a scholarship to get flying lessons, and right now there's a young lady from Assumption that is getting those lessons. She gets the lessons. She has to take all the tests. Everything is paid for. If she doesn't take the tests, doesn't do everything according to the rules, she has to pay all that back. When she's done, she'll have her pilot's license. Now, I think maybe Jeff Jess and Jeff Scott Jeffson's son started out there, and now he's an airline pilot. Mm-hmm. Um, they've had a fly-in, drive-in that was really good. They do the Oktoberfest balloon fest. Uh, they have they have airplanes come in all the time. They sell a lot of fuel. They had three Chinook helicopters come in from Canada last year because the weather was bad. They needed to stop someplace in order to get to the West Coast. They fueled up, spent like $3,000 on fuel, They went to town, got pizzas for them. They spent the whole day, spent money in town. Um, I think it's beneficial for IHI. Their people can fly in. It's it's just a huge asset to the county. Um, Are you able to get grants for it, or is it a a, you know is it a taxpayer funded, hundred percent taxpayer funded? The county gives them so much money, but most of it is, um, or they go through the FAA. Um, yeah, so there's different they ways get, they can get. Tried to get a grant for hangers, and that wasn't possible. Um, missed out on that because they didn't have enough money for the percentage that they needed for those hangers. Um, they're still working on that. Okay. All right. Um, I appreciate the background. Um, so a few questions here. Um, just as we kind of wrap up, come down the stretch. Um, you know, one thing that, and I don't know how this happens or what would have to happen to change it or if it would ever be changed, but um, I want to ask each one of you, do you think board members should be paid for meetings um, and reimbursed for mileage to and from meetings and the committee meetings? For me, it's... It really hasn't crossed my mind. It's really not a consideration as to why I'm running. And so I, I really don't have an opinion about it one way or the other. I know that sounds wishy-washy, but I don't know. I've really not thought about mileage and, and money because obviously that's, I would think that's not why somebody is running for the county board. Should they be paid? Um, I, I, I guess a, a nominal amount. Uh, I don't think anybody's going to get rich off this situation, but but maybe a nominal amount. Depends on how many committees you're on. If you're on a lot of committees, you get paid for every one of them. I have no cl- I have no clue what you get paid. I've never even inquired about it. I I think when I was on Christian County, we got like 110 or 15 bucks or something like that, and you got so much for mileage and uh, i mean i i can't even tell you what it was because it's minimal i'm not doing it for money yeah so the money has no meaning or bearing on why we're on one why we want to be on a county board you know when you look at the entire county board 
know, budget and, and you know, it's, it is a nominal amount. The, the thing that's interesting to me though, is one that it is paid, um, just cause <coughs> a lot of boards are not paid. Um, and two, it's not enough that I think it would make people, I mean, I wouldn't think that it would make people want to be on there, but at the same time, I kind of wonder in the back of my mind, would there be less of these committee meetings and less and more action being taken in meetings and getting things done if people knew that I'm not getting, even if it's a small fee every time? Um, and I'm not saying that anyone is, but it, it is a thought. I mean, it just seems like there are a lot of meetings uh, and a lot of committee meetings um, that don't seem to go in a, in a lot of places. But again, I'm not following it super closely, but from what I read, um, it just seems like maybe if there was no, nothing monetarily associated with it, it maybe it looks better and there's still that many meetings. Well, then people are truly doing it for, uh, you know, notoriety. Clay, I can tell you there are less committee meetings now because Bobby condensed like public safety, he condensed three different meetings into one. Yeah, and that's good. And it's $60 for a board meeting and 45 for a committee meeting, and the chairperson gets $70. Mm -hmm. And okay. I don't take pay, so. Um, okay. Interesting. Um, would each, uh, each one of you uh, agree to attend... Um, a county board training slash educational meeting at least every other year. And what makes me say this is um, I know school board members have the opportunity, or at least they used two years ago, to go um, to a school board training basically in Chicago uh, where the, everybody who's on a school board in the state of Illinois can go, and it's a couple of days, and they actually teach you about school finance and, you know, all the different intricacies that, you wouldn't really know unless you are on there for a while and learn about it. It was extremely helpful. Maybe not to go every year, but we would have a group that would go every year or every other year, maybe a third of the board would go. Um, I, I know they have that for about everything, but they have that for County boards just to learn the business. Would you guys be willing to do that at least, you know, once every two or three years? I, I don't have a problem with it because when I got on the Christie County board, we had to, if you didn't attend a class within a certain amount of time, you couldn't be on the board. When I was on the city council, you had to take a class. Mm -hmm. If you didn't take it, you couldn't be on the city council. So there's no problem with it. I mean, if you don't know anything, a lot of people go for these things and they have what I want to do, what I want to help do. But as far as what boards actually do, I have no clue. Right. And when I were on when I was on both those other boards, I didn't know everything I needed to know. But it's shocking me. how many things behind the scenes that you don't, oh, you definitely. don't understand the rules and laws and regulations yeah, and so on and so forth. Definitely. I mean, yeah. it, there, there's so many things there that you can learn, you know, you go one day at a class and, and learn it. Mm -hmm. it opens your eyes. Jeans in. What about you, Jeff? Oh, I think absolutely. <laughs> I think absolutely. I mean, really it, it would be helpful for me because, um, like Gene said, the rules and the regulations and the, you know, the workings of the board, it would be helpful for all of us to know that. Um, as long as this training um, was not ran by the Edgar County Watchdogs, I would be um, very, um, I would be um, willing to go to that. I think the training they've provided is, has been interesting for our board. We have members that need to go. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they're independent. Um, Carol, you, you've gone to one, haven't you? Actually, um, there's a meeting every month in Springfield. UCCI has a meeting, United Counties. can't remember what the other CES were. Anyway, it's every month. And you don't get paid for that, but Connie, the lady who takes care of the meetings, is in charge. She makes sure that you get paid for mileage. And it comes out of the county pays so much money a year to belong to UCCI. So the bottom line is um, you guys would all be willing yeah. to get educated. Uh, no problem. Yeah. Yes. Great. So th guys, um, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, I know there's a lot of questions uh, that we packed in here, but I pre appreciate you guys being open and honest. Um, again, reminder, uh, election day, March night, Tuesday, March 19th, you can pull a, um, 
Republican or Democratic ballot, depending on who you want to uh, vote for in your uh, particular district. And also, um, whether you're Mason's age generation, whether you're our generation, my generation, whether you're Carol's generation, whatever, um, (laughs) get out and vote. Yeah, regardless of who you want to vote for, um, what your feelings are, get out and vote um, is the main thing. So you get an opportunity to have have your voice and have your opinion heard. So thank you all for joining us. Best of luck to you guys. And we'll be back uh, with the next episode of the Mason Miller Show. Thank you. Thank you so much. Appreciate it.